Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about what's called the principal unit normal vector. So principal unit normal vector. So normal vector. So this is uh, an interesting vector. So basically the notation we use uh, is uh, capital N. I guess we use N for normal. So N of T it's equal to the derivative of the unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the unit tangent vector. You might say, what is the unit tangent vector? So recall, uh, the unit tangent vector is given uh, by your the derivative of the position vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the position vector. So what does this all mean like intuitively and graphically? Well, let me show you. Let's say we have a curve that looks like this. And then so in this case here, this yellow vector, this would be t of t. It's your tangent vector, hence the name tangent. Uh, so it's tangent to the curve. And it's a unit vector. Uh, you can see that because we've divided by the magnitude of our prime. So we've essentially turned r prime of t into a unit vector. Recall that if r of t is your position vector, r prime of t is your velocity vector. So when we divide by its magnitude, we turn it into a unit vector. So we normalize the velocity vector. Remember, to normalize a vector means turn it into a unit vector. That means that the magnitude of this vector is 1. So we have a tangent vector that has length 1. So what is this one here? Well, this one is the normal vector. So you just take the derivative of this, and then you normalize it. You turn it into a unit vector, and then so it would be orthogonal or perpendicular, same thing, to this one. So it would point in this direction here. So this would be n of t, beautiful stuff. So t of t is the tangent vector, and it points in the direction the object is moving. So the object is moving. Okay, so it always points uh, in the direction the object is moving. Okay, now n of t is orthogonal to t of t, and I'll actually explain why in a few seconds. We can explain why mathematically. So this is orthogonal. to t of t. So it's perpendicular or orthogonal to t of t. And it points in the direction the object is turning. So it points in the direction the object is turning. So points in the direction the object is turning. Let me write that down. The object is turning. So points in the direction um, the object is turning. So it always points towards the concave side. So like if this is your tangent vector here, your normal vector would be pointing that way. That would be n. That would be t over here. If this is your tangent vector here, your n is down here. That's what I mean by the concave side. Okay. If this is your tangent vector here, your n is up here. This is your n. This is your t. So, so that's the relationship between the unit normal vector and the unit tangent vector. Um, why is this, this, this is the case mathematically? Let me explain it really, really briefly. So recall, uh, I don't know if you know this, but if you have a vector valued function and you dot it with itself and it's constant, this implies, okay, this implies that the vector valued function is orthogonal to its derivative. Okay, that's what that implies. So in this case, um, Notice that if you dot the unit tangent vector with itself, there's a formula. This is equal to the magnitude squared. That's a formula from uh, vector calculus, right? If you dot a vector with itself, it's equal to the magnitude squared. But it's a unit vector, so its magnitude is 1. So this is 1 squared, so this is 1, right? So the dot product of the unit tangent vector with itself is equal to the magnitude squared. That's a formula from vector math. And that's 1 squared, which is 1. OK, so we're saying that it's constant, right? So this implies that this tangent vector, I really should put arrows above it. I'm just lazy. 
uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll omit them. Uh, that means that it's orthogonal to um, its derivative, right? So then what we do is we normalize the derivative and we call it the principal unit normal vector. So that's why it's orthogonal. All right, let's, let's do an example um, to show how to, how to find this. Okay, these take a little bit of work, so let's do one. So I think this is maybe the easiest example I can think of. Uh, so we have this vector valued function, which is going to be pi cosine t i hat uh, plus pi sine t j hat, okay? And here t is going to be equal to pi over 6, okay? And we're going to find um, the unit normal, uh, principal unit normal tangent vector, principal unit normal vector <laughs> to, to r. I said too many things at once. I called it the, the principal unit normal tangent. No, it's just the unit normal vector, okay? The tangent one is t, the normal one is n, right? t for tangent, n for normal. All right, solution. So we first have to find uh, the principal, uh, the, rather the, the, the tangent vector, right? The unit tangent vector. So we first have to find big T. So, so we first have to come up with this, right? This is our first step in this problem. Once we have this, then we can take its derivative and come up with uh, big N, right? Because big N is actually this. So you see how um, this could get really, really messy. So this problem is totally rigged uh, to be a little bit nicer. So let's start by working on this. So R prime of T. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is going to be negative pi sine T. I had my handwriting is failing. And then the derivative of sine is cosine, so plus pi cosine t j hat. Right, so far so good. And now we need to take the magnitude of this thing. So the magnitude of r prime of t, and this is why I said this problem is rigged. You take the square root and you square each of these components. You have negative pi sine t quantity squared plus pi cosine t quantity squared. This is equal to the square root, and then you square the pi, so you get pi squared sine squared t plus pi squared cosine squared t. And then you can pull out a pi squared, so I'll do that. So you get square root. I'm going to show every single step so you see it. So this is pi squared. I usually don't do this, but I'll show every step. Like, I've done this enough times, so you, you know you can skip steps once you do it enough times. So you pull out the pi squared, and then you know that's the square root of pi squared times 1, right? Because this identity is 1, right? You can take trig and fail it and know that. I always say that. That's the one identity everyone knows. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Square root of pi squared is just pi. So now, to find big T, so big T of T, well, we know that's r prime of T over the magnitude of r prime of t. Just writing down the formula again. So r prime of t is this bad boy here. So it's going to be negative pi sine t i hat plus pi cosine t j hat. And we divide everything by pi. So basically you're dividing each piece by pi, so the pi's cancel, right? So you just get negative sine t i hat plus cosine t. So this doesn't usually happen. It's not usually this nice, right? This problem, again, is rigged. I usually you get square roots and nasty stuff. Why? Because we have a square root here, right? So I picked this one because it's an easy one as an introduction. So now we can find the derivative of big T and then divide by its magnitude. So let's do it. So the derivative of big T, and again, I'm omitting the arrows above big T being a little bit lazy. The derivative of sine is cosine. So this is negative cosine t i hat, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so minus sine t j hat. And so now we can take the magnitude of this, because right, we need that for the formula. So you take the square root, then you square each piece. So it's going to be negative cosine t quantity squared plus negative sine t quantity squared. So that's just cosine squared plus sine squared, so it's 1, right? The negatives go away, so you get square root of 1, so you get 1. So n of t, 
I'll write the formula down again. It's t prime of t over the magnitude of t prime of t. And so that's equal to negative cosine t i hat minus sine t j hat over 1. So that's just negative cosine t i hat minus sine t j hat. All right, let's be careful now. We're almost done. Um, so then we just have uh, t. I think they gave us t at the beginning. Yeah, they did. T, t is pi over 6. So all you do now is plug in uh, pi over 6. So let's do that. So n of pi over 6. So that's going to be negative cosine pi over 6 i hat minus sine pi over 6 j hat. And then the cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. So this is negative square root of 3 over 2 i hat. And the sine of pi over 6 uh, is negative 1 half. So this is negative 1 half j hat, right? The negative is already there, so it just becomes negative 1 half, and that's it. That is your principal unit normal vector. So I hope this has been helpful. That's it.